Hi everyone, welcome to our presentation, Design Computation to Robotic Production Methods for Reciprocal Tessellation of Freeform Timber Structures, Design, Production, and Assembly of 100 Years Bauhaus Wood Pavilion. I'm Sina Mustafavi from TU Delft and the Sao Institute of Architecture where I did Dash Studios. I'm presenting this project together with Valmir Kastrati, Osam Bad, and Charles Van Maslan. In Dars, we are looking into different computational design, material research, and robotic production uh, workflows, and we are uh, running several design and production studios. Uh, uh, as you can see in this slide, in this particular project, we are looking into design to robotic production of reciprocal uh, frame structures. Reciprocal frames uh, are used vastly in structural design and uh, architecture. For instance, in this case, you see a sketch by Da Vinci, or on the left, you see a project by Ken Gokuma, or on the right, you see a project which is solved by uh, Arup engineers. And at the same time, we see a lot of projects which are focusing on digital production of woods. These are discussed in details in relation to the project in the paper. Uh, but uh, for this project, one of the main focus was to see how we can apply these reciprocal systems on freeform structures. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the brief of the studio was uh, designing uh, a pavilion uh, for the 100 years Bauhaus anniversary in the, the Seoul campus. Therefore, we develop an integrated um, computational design to robotic production system where we are considering uh, different scales ranging from micro to meso and macro scale. And that's why the, the paper is divided into three uh, main uh, subsections. One is solving the cessation of freeform reciprocal structures. Uh, second is multi-scalar form finding and materialization. And third is robotic production of an assembly. And Valmi will walk us through the first part, which is tessellation. Yeah, thank you, Sina. Uh, so as said before that we are working on three scales of architecture, we started by the micro scale here by analyzing different geometrical shapes and trying to solve one reciprocal cell and see how the cell works. Uh, when we put it in three dimensions, we see uh, in the next slide that uh, we have uh, uh, these three uh, different types of cells and we took one of those and fabricated it to see what will be the challenges in the future uh, to apply this method in the uh, entire pavilion. Uh, the fabrication obviously will be discussed later uh, in a section uh, more thoroughly. So uh, to apply this uh, system into a macro scale, we uh, started by developing two techniques. The first one takes into consideration uh, the curvature analysis of the uh, surface while the second one takes in, uh, will be uh, a recursive system, uh, which is a routine that uh, starts from three different points, uh, grows towards its neighbors, and creates these normal circles that are planar to the normal of the surface. Uh, this helps with the organizing the data structure itself, firstly. And secondly, the method goes on and rotates throughout its own axis, each member, until it meets the criteria which criteria which is uh, having three faces on each meeting uh, notch. Uh, here we have a video which explains the, this uh, recursive loop uh, more thoroughly. And as for the next step, we have uh, the uh, form finding which will be uh, explained by E1. Okay, thank you, Valme. Okay, for the multi-scalar form finding and materialization, the macro design of this pavilion is considering multiple architecture and structure input. The overall pavilion is designed with the three anchor points that freely roaming uh, in the parameter bounding of this pavilion while um, considering the human activities under it. The mesh resolution for this pavilion is set to 300 considering the design factor. The dynamic mesh relaxation process is in introduced to obtain the better mesh quality. The anti-gravitational force is applied to the pavilion with the help of caramba, and then we introduce these two cross sections of the wood to give the thickness variation to the pavilion. For the final design, uh, we use the multi-objective optimization to finding the optimal design of this pavilion that consider the four main fitness criteria, which is mass to be minimized, total accessible average height to be maximized, total structural displacement on the all vertices to be minimized, total internal elastic energy to be minimized. For the next step, I will pass to Husam for the next subtopic, which is fabrication and assembly process. Thank you, Iwan. 
to set the robotic production and assembly uh, wor uh, workflow, we, we have uh, run uh, different tests with the robot. Um, uh, and we tested uh, two milling uh, methods. Uh, the first uh, method was uh, layer uh, by layer uh, cutting method, and uh, uh, other method were um, parameter method. Uh, for the first uh, method, uh, trial we did uh, for with production, we created the notches just in one of the elements of the reciprocal structure. Uh, on the other hand, in the second case, we did uh, in both members uh, the notches. Um, uh, this makes the production uh, times uh, more in the second uh, uh, trial, but uh, it also helps uh, to make it more stiffness, the connection, and it helps the assembly. And this was the first uh, collaborative workshop we did uh, in TU Delft. Uh, we tested the workflow for, us, uh, for production um, and assembly with uh, EPS uh, members, uh, different size. And for the final prototype, um, we produced uh, 78 reciprocal wooden element and uh, it was different sizes. Um, ranging from 50 centimeters to 170 centimeters. In this video, you see how the assembly process goes, uh, and we learned also this tessellation method that we established also helps a lot in tagging and the assembly sequence. And uh, eventually, uh, after removing the, the, the tie wraps, we see also the whole overall structure is stable. Uh, here you see the final prototype, which is a portion of the, the larger scale pavilion. Um, and uh, in this uh, detail, you can see how uh, we, after removing the zip ties, the overall structure is stable. Uh, for the conclusion, uh, in the discussion, we have concluded four uh, major findings and points in the conclusion. One is about this computational design to uh, robotic production workflow, which consider geometric and fabrication constraints and potentialities. Another uh, interesting uh, finding that we uh, had is that if we apply a variation of reciprocal cells, we might be able to uh, uh, integrate interesting architectural and structural considerations. Uh, third um, is about the way we can uh, think of automating the process of assembly using robot to robot or human to robot collaboration as a follow up. And uh, fourth uh, is about the way uh, the assembly logic can potentially inform the overall design. For instance, in this case, we see how these basket shapes are helping the stability of the, the structure, not only after it is finalized, but also during the process. Last but not least, we would like to thank all the participants of this studio and all the individuals who help us during the assembly and production process. Uh, and uh, you can also visit our projects in our Instagram page or Facebook page of theirs and we would like to welcome uh, any comments or questions that you may have. Thank you very much.